A hyperactive weather pattern is going to be coming to the United States over the next several days, and this is going to bring multiple rounds of severe storms to areas like the Central and Northern Plains, and as well as the Midwest, and then eventually going into the Ohio Valley and Northeast. So in today's forecast, we're going to break down exactly what you need to know about this hyperactive weather pattern, and why after this pattern, we are going to see the potential for record-breaking heat across much of the country. Let's begin with what's happening across the United States right now and we are finally done with talking about hurricane barrel the remnants are fully out of the united states and areas like new england are finally drying out and the weather is much nicer in those areas at least for the time being but one thing that we are going to be watching for in the tropics really for like maybe the next 10 hours or so is this little area of development just off to the east of florida the national hurricane center has given us a quote-unquote near zero percent chance of forming into anything meaningful like a tropical depression or storm but there is a little bit of convection there there that's been kind of sitting just off the coast of Florida. It is slowly drifting to the north towards South Carolina, but overall other than just some showers and thunderstorms this is not expected to develop into anything meaningful. For the rest of the Gulf of Mexico and Caribbean Sea, there's nothing forecasted over the next 10 days in terms of tropical activity, so those along the Gulf Coast will finally get a break from anything related to hurricane madness that we're probably going to be seeing throughout the year this year. Now back over in the central and northern plains, this is an area that is going to start to ramp up more in activity as we go throughout the weekend as we are going to get some ejections out of areas like Canada where we'll start to see some more showers, thunderstorms, and plenty of mesoscale convective systems which essentially means that we're going to start to see some lines of storms moving out of Canada and that'll pose a threat for wind, hail, and maybe even a few tornadoes across those in, in the northern plains and the midwest as we go into both this weekend and as well as into early next week. So talking more about that, we are going to have a few days of severe weather ahead. Today's severe weather risk it's relatively low. We just have a marginal threat of severe weather for flying fences Friday. That goes from areas like North Dakota back into areas like Kansas, where overall the main concern today is going to be damaging winds and maybe some large hail. Tomorrow, though, is going to be a bit different. We're talking more about damaging winds with those mesoscale convective systems that are possible tomorrow. That'll be primarily across areas in Minnesota, eventually going into Wisconsin. I wouldn't even be surprised if we saw some severe weather later Saturday across areas in Illinois where there will be a potential for damaging winds and a little bit of isolated hail. But in this particular weather pattern, we are going to be watching for several mesoscale convective systems to go across areas like the Northern Plains and eventually into the Midwest, where those will be leading to mostly damaging winds. But in a few areas, but especially behind these mesoscale convective systems, we actually could end up seeing the potential for an isolated tornado or two. And for Saturday, we do have that potential for an isolated tornado or two, both in areas like Western and Northern Minnesota and even back into parts of Montana and North Dakota. And really, I think as we go to Saturday, the better chance for tornadoes will be in this small corridor back over west of Minneapolis. And I think we'll have a potential for an isolated, discrete supercell or two during the late afternoon and evening, and that could lead to the potential for a tornado risk. Now, we will talk more about the timing in addition to also the other areas that are going to be impacted by severe weather beyond Saturday in just a moment. I just want to show you the setup, what we're looking at for this weekend, and it's a little bit of a different different setup. We had this setup a couple weeks back where there were a couple of mesoscale convective systems in the Midwest, and this is going to be something that's very common throughout this particular time of the year. As we go into mid to late July and even into early August, we're going to continue to see a low-level jet that's going to kind of push out these little areas of thunderstorms that are mostly going to be in a form of a mesoscale convective system, which again is just a fancy word for a line of thunderstorms. So once we go into Saturday, Sunday, and Monday, we are going to continue to see that penetrating, especially from this low pressure system and that'll move into areas again like the northern plains the midwest and perhaps eventually into the northeast the ohio valley is a bit more questionable right now but if we do see anything there it'll probably be on the northern half of the ohio valley areas like ohio and maybe indiana might get some severe weather out of this particular disturbance so the tornado risk for both today and tomorrow is going to vary a little bit today's tornado risk doesn't really exist i don't really expect any tornado threat to really materialize anywhere in the northern plains today maybe a very low risk somewhere in like North Dakota, but I just don't see really anything materializing today. Once we go to tomorrow, things could get a little bit more interesting. We are going to likely have a line of storms moving through the morning hours, which I'll show you in just a second. And then another setup will occur during the afternoon hours, primarily
primarily here in western Minnesota. And in this area, we actually could see the potential for an isolated tornado or two develop as we go into the late afternoon and into the early evening hours. So what does this all look like? Well, beginning with today, we're going to be watching for some showers and thunderstorms to erupt anywhere from northern Nebraska back into North Dakota, where there will be a potential for some hail and wind. I don't really expect any sort of tornado risk, as I mentioned before, but maybe a brief spin up out of this mesoscale convective system. And as we go into the overnight hours, eventually into Saturday morning, this will push into Minnesota. And as long as this continues, we are probably going to see damaging winds as a concern, but it should be scattered in nature for those in both Minnesota and eventually Wisconsin. By the late morning and into the early afternoon hours, this will continue to move into Wisconsin. We could see this redevelop as it goes into northern Illinois. So if you're in northern Illinois, again, damaging winds would be the main concern. What will be interesting, I think, as we go into Saturday afternoon will be two different things. We'll have a low tornado risk back over in Montana, so any discrete supercells there may produce an isolated tornado. But I think a more interesting setup, if it does materialize, will be in Minnesota, where we could see one, two, maybe even three discrete supercells fire off. And any of those supercells could go a bit crazy and produce the potential for maybe a tornado or two. And I, but I do have to say, overall, this is a pretty conditional risk as of right now, and things may change a little bit over the next 24 hours. But it is something to watch for if any of these storms do develop. It'll be a pretty, really small area that I think these storms will be end up going anywhere, basically. We could see some storms also fire up further to the north of this activity that the HRRR model shows. So again, it's a pretty large area still, but any storms that fire up in this environment would be capable of a tornado risk. Now, beyond Saturday, the weather pattern gets a little bit weird. So again, we're going to continue to watch for a hyperactive weather pattern across areas in the Midwest with this jet stream angling from northwest to southeast. This will again allow for mesoscale convective systems to impact this area probably all the way through Monday, if not even into Tuesday. And then by Wednesday into Thursday, this jet stream will actually start to get a little bit stronger as it goes into the northeast, and that could allow for maybe an isolated severe weather setup or two in New England. Once we go into Thursday into Friday of next week, we have this large ridge that starts to build in the western tier of the country, and this should overall keep the weather pattern relatively quiet back over in the northern plains in the Midwest with a nice little cool down behind that. And then back over in areas like the southern plains in the southeast, I think the weather pattern starts to ramp back up again. And then after the weekend, things might get active again, but again, it's just too far out from now to actually be able to forecast something like that. Here's the future radar for the next few days. So again, we'll be watching for some mesoscale convective systems through the weekend. Once we go into Sunday, I think we'll have another chance for severe weather, at least back over in the northern plains, but perhaps even in the Midwest as we go into Monday, we could get some severe weather. Right now, the main concern does appear to be damaging winds for any of the severe weather events beyond Saturday wouldn't rule out an isolated tornado risk. Once we go into Tuesday, we'll be watching for some showers and thunderstorms across the Ohio Valley. That's again, mainly Ohio back into areas in New England, where there will be a potential for some isolated severe weather. Once we go into Wednesday and a Thursday, it looks very active across parts of the central plains, even in the East coast and as well as the Southern plains, this low pressure system still going to be able to pull some energy here. So we'll be able to see at least a few showers and thunderstorms across a pretty large area. And then by Thursday and a Friday, things become become more uncertain, but I do think we'll have a high pressure system in the Midwest. This is a surface-based high pressure system, so that'll keep many areas warmer and drier. On the flip side of things, it'll stay pretty active across the Southern Plains, the Southeast, and as well as the East Coast. And then eventually, as we go into next weekend, things become uncertain, but I do think the weather pattern will be overall favoring a much quieter pattern. So I don't think we're gonna have any major severe weather events, for example. Now with this weather pattern, it's going to stay very hot across the western tier of the country where above average temperatures are expected through the weekend. By the time we go into early next week, warmer weather will return to areas, especially in the central plains and the southern plains, where many areas will be up into the 100s. And then once we go into Tuesday, Wednesday, into Thursday, watch this low pressure system move to the northeast, eventually ushering in colder air to areas like the Midwest, where below average temperatures are in the forecast by the mid to late week. And then eventually into the weekend, things will start to probably start to get a bit warmer across most of the country and then eventually as we go into next week things become uncertain but it looks like the same old same old type of stuff that we usually see in the summer temperatures are going into sunday afternoon right now forecasted to be in the mid to high 100s across parts of the central and northern plains i probably should rephrase that we're not talking about 190 degrees for example but we are talking about the higher spectrum of the low 100 so again 100 maybe 809 degrees possible in like nebraska kansas and even back into south dakota 
Minnesota. Areas like the Midwest, Northeast, not as bad. And as we go into the middle of the week, watch areas in the Midwest will be down into the mid to upper 60s for high temperatures as that colder air starts to usher in. The Climate Prediction Center right on board with that forecast with that bullseye for colder air being in areas like the Midwest and as well as the Ohio Valley with above average temperatures continuing in the Southeast and as well as the Pacific Northwest. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to hit the like button down below and subscribe if you've not already.